So the second case, um, the clinical stem, is a 64-year-old man who was rushed into your surgery with a six-hour history of hematemesis. So he's recently had some back pain that's required analgesia. In terms of his past history, he's a non-smoker, drinks five to six standard drinks a day, um, and on examination, he appears pale and sweaty. His blood pressure is 90 over 50. And his heart rate is 110. So the question, the first part is to list three steps in your initial management of this patient. Again, you need to note down the um, key features in terms of the, the stem. You want to think like you would normally to in your in your day to day practice, the question is focused on your initial management. So, again, go through the question systematically to identify all the key features. So, they want three steps. So, make sure you only give them three. Try to give them three if you can. Think of three. If you can't think of it, then that's okay. Give as many as you can, but only give up to three. Do not give more than three. Do not give more than three. Um, the next part of the question is what you, would you do in your initial management? So you know that this is about your management, so it's about um, treatment, but also you have to pay attention to the keyword initial. So um, what would you do as, a, as an emergency situation, I guess, if you identified that as being an emergency situation? Move on maybe to the next part of the question. So, so we have a lot of answers. Okay. So the clinical stem remains the same. There's been no change to that. Just as a side note, sometimes when you move on to the second or third part of the case, um, so the, the second or third part, third questions of the case, they may sometimes give you an additional couple of lines in terms of the clinical stem. To, to target your, your answers towards that as well. So um, in this scenario, I've not made any changes, but um, you know, it could have, as a variant, I guess, be something like a 64-year-old man who comes in to your surgery with hematemesis, um, list three key features on your history that you would take, and then the next part would give you maybe some examination details and ask you about that. You have to, I guess, realize that with the KSP, they can't give you too much information subsequently because sometimes that information can impact on what your answer might be in the first part of the case as well. So um, just be just be um, aware that, that that's sometimes how it's how it's. Um, so in the first question was, what were your three initial steps in management? Um, I guess with the case being that of a 64-year-old man with hematemesis with low blood pressure and um, a high heart rate or tachycardic, sorry, um, it basically means that he's in, he's in shock and most likely hypovolemic shock um, related to the hematemesis. In terms of the other parts of the history, with him having analgesia and with him um, having a higher level of alcohol, that can sometimes give you some clues as to um, potential differential diagnosis. But in this scenario, it's not really that relevant to how you, you would necessarily list your answers. Okay. So, um, the answer that I had just come up with was to call an ambulance. So a lot of people had put that, which was good. Um, intravenous fluids is also one of the key answers. Um, so basically, it's, it's been allocated two, two marks because you should definitely be considering that as part of your management. Because whilst you're waiting for the ambulance to get there, if you don't start fluids, you may start to deteriorate. And you do want to, to have that while, whilst you're waiting, I guess. 
in terms of oxygen, um, again, that's one answer, and lying the patient with the, the head down and feet elevated is also another. Um, a lot of people have been putting IV access and then IV fluids. I do think that is very appropriate um, as putting as distinct answers as well. So although it's not on the list at the moment, as I said, if a lot of people do put down the same answer and it's very appropriate, then, um, then that would be considered as a, as a correct answer. So a lot of you did score all marks essentially. Um, airway was also an important thing that I personally didn't put down, but again, um, it was just me um, um, writing the question. So I take your point, airway, breathing circulation, that sort of thing is also very important and would be considered as, as a correct answer. In terms of the second question as well, um, what single investigation um, what, what would be the single most useful investigation to establish a diagnosis? So again, you have to identify the key features. They only want one answer, so don't put any more than just one answer. And don't put variations of the same answer as well, um, which a lot of you did put down. So essentially, yes, gastroscopy or upper GI endoscopy is correct. I guess now might be a good time to answer some of the questions. Specifically with uh, with relation to the, the cases, so just reading through. Um, so yeah, I think there's a few questions answered about if you gave four correct answers rather than three, would you still um, get the four marks? Basically, no, because they have asked you for three, so you should only provide. Them up to three, if you provide less, that's okay, but if you provide more, that will lose your marks. In terms of oxygen, um, I think you would give oxygen in this scenario anyway, because it is an in shock. But um, uh, I take your point that is, you know, there's no mention of any saturation measurements, so it's not a, um, uh, it's not a, critical feature, which is why it's only allocated one mark as well. Um, airway and breathing is important as well, so that's, that's fair enough, I take that point. And so um, it would be part of the answer list. And um, I think in terms of the scenario of the case, they're basically trying to test that you can identify it as a, an emergency scenario, that you would you know, basically prioritize this patient in front of all you know, your, your routine patients, so um, so yeah, that that would be equally valid to to assess his airway and to assess his yeah. breathing as well. Good. Sure. Can you um, just comment on some of the answers and how specific um, the candidates would have to be in terms of what what would be classed as an answer that's too broad or covering. Um, in what they think might be one answer, but actually the examiners would be considered that as two separate answers and potentially then meaning that they're providing too many answers. Yeah, okay. Um, so I think one of the yes. questions was, one, secure an airway, including putting them on their side and, and to prevent aspiration. And then another answer in, in the set was IV cannula bloods and intravenous fluids. And then um, so, there's a few multiple answers in those. Mm, mm. Yeah, so I, okay, so if you, if you gave the patient IV fluids, that would give you two marks. That would not be a problem at all. If you put IV access, that would, would be appropriate to consider that as a separate answer. If you said something like, um, Okay, so, um, so something like a group. So one of them said assess yeah. airway, breathing, and circulation. Would that be considered okay. as? Mm. Yeah, that's a good question. I think that certainly, yeah. So from that point of view, I think that would be too broad. I don't think you could be.
putting down airway, breathing, and circulation as one as one um, answer, because that it would take us probably three separate answers in this scenario, because they want you to be very specific to to um, to to do that. So, so if you put down say something like Doctor ABC, that I think would be too broad. And what about certain things like if, if some of the um, people tonight suggested that we um, that we did a group and hold and mm. just comment could you on what would be done say in a hospital setting versus um, what the examiners are looking for that you can do in a general practice setting? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I guess a group and hold is a good idea as well and you will definitely be doing that as part of um, your management of the patient. Um, in the general practice setting, again, you, you need to take into account that there are rural GPs in, out there as well, and they um, they not only have their rooms, but also uh, they they work at the local hospital or whatever. So, so that may be appropriate in that case. I don't think you necessarily would um, lose marks for that. And as I said, if you if there were enough candidates who did put that down, and again, it is very appropriate. I think the college, when they review all the answers to the cases, will take that into consideration. So again, it's not one of the most vital cases in your immediate management, because I mean, with the patient in front of you in your surgery, um, where the stem specifies that um, it is in your surgery, then, then um, you should be guided by, by that scenario, by that case. So, okay. um, so they take into I account that, that there will be GPs who would be considering that a, a, a group and hold or a cross match would be very appropriate um, because they may then follow that patient into the hospital but um, um, try to be specific in terms of what the, the question's asking in terms of your actual location at that time. Yeah, yeah exactly. And I'm just referring to gastroscopy. Um, yeah, again, the, the question very specifically asks you about the, um, the, the diagnosis and the single most useful one. So um, that is more, I guess, a test of your, your knowledge more so than your, your management. And obviously, you know, the majority of us wouldn't be doing gastroscopy, but um, that to answer the question would be, would be the most appropriate answer. Um, in terms of uh, someone's question yeah. about uh, increased work of breathing, I'll just quickly answer that. So, um, increased work of breathing would be the, the broad, broad category. And if you did put something like tracheal tug, then again, you would get answers for that. But if, say, you put down something like tracheal tug, and then you put down intercostal recession and um, subcostal recession as three separate answers, then you wouldn't get um, the full the full marks for that because you would only be able to get a maximum of two two marks for for one of those answers. So it's better to be um, more specific about different other things. Okay. 